She was beautiful, happy, hilarious, wise beyond her years. And she had so much more life to live. Happy 25th birthday. She was a normal teenager who loved selfies and posting on social media. But one day, she went out to get her hair done and never came back. No one knew about her whereabouts for seven years. Well, except the man who took her. Let's dive in. Alexis Murphy lived in Shipman, Virginia, and attended Nelson County High School, where she was a senior and star volleyball player. She was described as a beautiful, outgoing, happy, and hilarious girl who loved goofing around and making people People laugh. On August 3rd, 2013, Alexis borrowed her dad's car and drove off to Lynchburg to buy some hair extensions. Her senior year pictures were due and she wanted to look her best. So Alexis left home at 3 p.m. and the drive was supposed to take about 20 minutes, but she never came back. Alexis had a midnight curfew that she never missed. So when her grandma, who was living with them at the time, noticed that it was past midnight and Alexis had not returned, she called Alexis's mom, Laura Murphy. Laura was working the midnight shift at the post office and was was worried since it was so unlike Alexis to stay out late like this. She contacted Alexis's dad, Troy Brown, who then called the cops and reported her missing. The search for Alexis began almost immediately. The last time that anyone had heard from her was around 6.40 p.m. when she tweeted, I actually look cute right now. That was probably after getting her hair done. No one could tell what happened to her after that, and she'd not shown any signs that she wanted to run away. The news of her disappearance spread quickly, and since she had thousands of followers on social media, her pictures pictures were all over the internet. Friends, family, and volunteers went around distributing flyers while the sheriff's department scoured the area using sniffer dogs and a helicopter. The FBI was also brought in to help in the investigation. Alexis's heartbroken mother, Laura, went on TV begging for anyone with information to come forward. If anybody know anything, please, please, let us know. Please. Three days went by without a single clue as to what happened to Alexis. But then the police found something that diminished everyone's hope. The car that Alexis was driving was abandoned at a movie theater parking lot in Charlottesville. There was no sign of Alexis and nothing could help the police figure out what happened to her. But when investigators started checking security footage from nearby buildings, they discovered that a man had dumped it there at 10 p.m. the day after Alexis went missing. However, they could not identify the person since the video was too grainy and of poor quality. So, it was back to square one. Investigators decided to check every location along the route that Alexis could have gone. They went to Liberty Gas Station in Lovingston, which was a popular hangout joint for local teens, and found that Alexis had been there. A security camera even captured her entering the convenience store at the gas station. She was alone and nothing seemed to be out of place. But then when she was leaving, detectives noticed a man at the store opening the door for her. Normally, something like that may not even raise an eyebrow, but there was just something about this guy that did not sit right with the detectives. Whether it was the weird looking tattoo on his neck or the camouflage suburban that the guy drove, the detectives felt the need to look deeper into him. But even before they could do that, the FBI managed to ping Alexis's phone to an abandoned property about a mile from the gas station. So all the necessary authorities were alerted and they all went there hoping to find Alexis or her phone. But what they found was the camouflaged SUV and the creepy looking guy with the neck tattoo who introduced himself as Randy Taylor. Investigators started asking him if he knew Alexis or had seen someone who looked like her around. Randy said he didn't and even invited the detectives into his trailer to look around. At this point, the cops didn't have any reason to suspect him other than the fact that he looked weird and he was in the same place as Alexis before she disappeared. But when they searched his home, they found a diamond stud earring, a nail, and a strand of long black hair on Randy's pillow. If these things belonged to Alexis, then Randy was lying to them, and he probably hurt her in some way. The investigators collected the items and took them for DNA testing. As they waited for the results, they started looking at the surveillance video again, hoping to catch something they had missed. They checked cameras from different angles and found one that showed Randy leaving the gas station with Alexis following close behind. Before they could confront Randy with this new information, he went and changed his statement, claiming that Alexis had come to his house with another man to buy some he described the guy as black with dreadlocks and said that they 
drank a few beers before Alexis left with the guy. He even gave a name, Damien Bradley. Investigators followed up on this, but when they talked to Damien, he totally denied everything, saying that he had never been at Randy's place. On the day that Alexis disappeared, he said that he had gone to visit his father in Alabama. Investigators believed and knew that Randy was trying to play them. They wanted to know more about Randy, and so they started asking around about him, and what they found was pretty disturbing. Everyone knew Randy as the creep who would sit at the parking lot at the gas station for hours, watching people coming in and out of the convenience store. They also found out that just a few minutes before going to the gas station, Randy had gone to an adult shop and bought some movies, which the cops believed he intended to watch with Alexis. Investigators were now convinced that Alexis was hurt and Randy was responsible. Sadly, they were right. When they returned to Randy's trailer with a search warrant, they found a t-shirt with bloodstains on it, a hair extension, and some false eyelashes. They took these items to the lab and they all came back positive for Alexis's DNA. They also came across a scrapbook that had pictures of unclothed girls whose faces were cut off and replaced with faces of different girls in the neighborhood. That sick and pretty messed up. Randy was arrested and charged with abduction, though he still claimed that he had nothing to do with what happened to Alexis. Although the authorities could not prove that he had taken Alexis's life, the blood on the t-shirt was enough evidence to convince them that he had. So without a body, they charged Randy with abduction and homicide. The jury found him guilty of first degree homicide and he was given two life sentences. Alexis's family members were happy with this sentence and they said that while it would not bring them closure, they could now move on. I mean, it certainly doesn't bring the closure that we need um, because the only thing they can do that is find an Alexis Alexis and uh, putting her to rest, but it definitely goes a long way um, in helping us move on. Randy continued to claim that he was innocent throughout the trial. He even did a TV interview later on claiming that he had been wrongly accused. No, I did not kill Alexis Murphy or hurt Alexis Murphy. You know where she is? No, sir, I do not. At some point, even the police started to believe that maybe they got the wrong guy. And things even got more complicated when a serial killer, Jesse Matthew, was arrested because he matched Randy's description of the man that had taken Alexis. The cops started reviewing the case to see if maybe Randy was telling the truth after all. But of course he wasn't and DNA testing confirmed that. And then get this, Randy, after realizing that he was done for and nothing could get him out, decided to come clean, saying that he would tell where Alexis was if he got a shorter sentence of 20 years. Alexis's family straight out refused. They said that they were not going to reward him for hiding Alexis's body. They wanted him to spend the rest of his life in prison so that he never gets a chance to hurt some other girl. But as it turns out, he probably already did. And Alexis was not even his first victim. In September 2010, a 19-year-old girl called Samantha Clark went missing from her home in Orange County, which is just a few miles from Charlottesville. Samantha lived in the same trailer park as Randy and had hung out with him and his friends a few times. The night she disappeared, Samantha left home at around midnight, telling her brother that she was going out for a while and would be back. She never returned and the police never found her. They later learned that Randy had called Samantha five times that night before she went missing. When they asked him about it, Randy claimed that he called to warn her about another woman who wanted to hurt her for stealing her boyfriend. The police never found anything to charge Randy, but were convinced that he did something to her. The case is still open to date, and if Randy is ever convicted for it, he could get capital punishment. If he's not, he'll still be spending the rest of his miserable life in prison for what he did to Alexis. Alexis was a beautiful young girl with her whole life ahead of her, and this monster took that right away from her. Her former classmates honored her memory during the graduation ceremony by decorating their graduation hats with her name and putting pink ribbons on their robes. Her family was presented with the diploma she would have been given if she were around. Her aunt said that Alexis had been looking forward to graduating and that they were going to celebrate her achievement. This day was coming, so we were happy to know that the school wanted to present something and that, you know, the community is still behind our family. Although Randy had already been charged with Alexis's death, her family still had some hope that Alexis was still alive. For years, they continued searching around for her, hanging banners with her picture on them, and asking anyone with information to come forward. But in December 2020, this hope came to an end when police found Alexis's remains buried in a private property in Lovingston, five miles from where she was last seen. This was quite the heartbreaking news to the family, though they were somehow happy that they could finally lay her to rest. While we have been grieving the loss of Alexis since 2013, we remained hopeful that she would be found 
alive and well. We were blessed to have loved her for 17 years, and her memory will continue to live on through all of us. On the day that would have been Alexis's 25th birthday, family and friends gathered at the Nelson County High School football stadium to finally say goodbye to her. She was beautiful, happy, hilarious, wise beyond her years. And she had so much more life to live. Happy 25th birthday. That's the end of our video today. What do you think about this case? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section.